Welcome to the AP Systems YC600 and QS1 installation video series. This series will cover the overview, preparation, and installation of the YC600 and QS1 microinverters. This video series, designed for professional solar installers, is not intended to replace the installation manuals, but to provide a brief overview on the installation process of these AP Systems microinverters. Please note there is important information in the manuals that professional installers will want to be aware of. You can find this documentation and additional resources on our website at apsystems.com. Before getting started on installation, professional installers will also want to be sure they have an AP Systems EMA account. An EMA account is necessary to set up homeowner customer accounts for online monitoring. So be sure to visit our website at apsystems.com and click on the register link under the resources tab or visit apsystems.com slash register to fill out the form requesting an EMA account. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the YC600 and QS1 microinverters and the system components and accessories. The YC600 is a single phase dual module microinverter, which means it connects to two PV modules. The QS1 is a single phase four module microinverter, which can connect to up to four PV modules. YC600 and QS1 microinverters can be conveniently used together on the same circuit. We'll get into the details of how to best mix and match these microinverter models a bit later. Both microinverter units connect to an AC bus or trunk cable, which has accessories including a terminal cap to cap off a terminal that would normally connect to a microinverter, a cable end cap for sealing a cut trunk cable, and an AC extension cable to go around a chimney, for example, as well as male and female connectors to connect the extension cable to the trunk line. On the DC side, there are male and female MC4 caps to cap off unused connectors on the microinverter, and DC extension cables to connect to hard-to-reach PV modules. AP Systems uses a disconnect tool to disengage microinverters from the trunk cable terminal to prevent unintentional disconnection. The AP Systems ECUR and ECUC are gateway devices which communicate with the microinverters and relay their signals and production data to our EMA platform in the cloud. These devices use wireless Zigbee to communicate with the microinverters and then require an Ethernet cable or wireless connection to the homeowner's router to backhaul system data to the cloud. Now let's look at a few tools required to complete the microinverter installation. You'll need a socket wrench or power drill with a socket attachment sized appropriately for your racking system. Racking hardware will vary by manufacturer, so be sure to do a fitment check with the microinverters and your racking fasteners before you're on the roof to be sure you've got the right hardware. You'll also want cable zip ties, an AP Systems disconnect tool in case you need to disconnect a microinverter from the trunk cable, and a multimeter to ensure circuit continuity before you install the PV modules. AP Systems cares about your safety and requires that all installers obey the following safety instructions when installing AP Systems microinverters. One, only qualified, licensed, and trained solar installation professionals familiar with the requirements for safety, electrical systems, and EMC and who are authorized to energize, ground, and tag equipment, systems, and circuits in accordance with established safety procedures should be installing AP Systems products. The inverter and balance of the system should only be installed, commissioned, and diagnosed for any issues by qualified personnel. Two, all inverter equipment, cables, connectors, and accessories should be provided by AP Systems or compatible with AP Systems equipment and have markings for electrical safety standards. Three, all electrical system installation, grounding, breaker, and cable sizing and connections must be done in accordance with local electrical codes. Four, installers should also wear a roof-anchored safety harness and helmet when doing any work on the roof. 